Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Stitch Sessions. If you're new here, welcome, and I'm so glad that you decided to come along and join me on my crochet adventure today. We are going to be working on a new stitch, and I thought uh, since spring is just around the corner and I always start thinking of spring cleaning, I thought working on a new stitch in a dishcloth would be a perfect opportunity. So today we're going to explore the linked single crochet. So if you know your single crochet, this is just a little variation on that very common, very basic stitch. And um, I just used some of my leftover scrap cotton yarn and cotton is definitely what I would recommend uh, for a dishcloth. It withstands heat and moisture very well, and you can always throw these in the wash. So I'm really excited about showing you this stitch because it is very simple, but it creates this really lovely dense fabric, and especially if you don't like uh, crochet that has a lot of um, gaps in it, this is a great stitch for you and it's perfect for things like dishcloths. You can use it for blankets and things as well too if you want to create a really kind of cozy thick fabric. So um, I think you're really going to like working on this and it creates a really cool kind of texture as well. So let's get all of our materials together and let's stitch up our linked single crochet dishcloth. Okay, so for this tutorial, you're gonna need some cotton yarn, and I absolutely always recommend 100% cotton yarn for dishcloths or anything that's gonna take a lot of a moisture. So I'm just using up some of my scraps here. You probably will use about 50 grams or so, or um, I'm sorry, you'll probably use about 25 to 30 grams, because I know when I use one of these uh, Bernat Handicrafter cotton yarns, they generally come in 50 gram uh, skeins, and I can usually get two dish dishcloths out of these. So, and for this project, I'm gonna be using a five millimeter hook, which is also known as an H or a size eight. And I like using this size, especially for dishcloths, because it just helps the stitches sit a little bit uh, closer together. And as always, you'll need a trusty pair of scissors and a darning needle for sewing in your ends. Okay, so to create our dishcloth using the linked single crochet, there is no uh, stitch count multiple, so you just chain the length that you want. So what we're going to do first is we're going to place a slip knot on our hook. And I always like to start with a base chain count of 40 for my dishcloths. So I'm just gonna chain up 40. Okay, I now have 40 chains. You just wanna make sure that your work is not twisted. And we're now gonna begin. So into the second chain from the hook, remember we never count the loop that's on the hook, one and two, we're gonna place a regular single crochet into that stitch, just like that, okay? Now we're gonna begin our linked single crochet. So if you notice our stitch has created a couple little loops that go in the front like that. And so what we're gonna do before we go into the next stitch is we're just gonna go into that first loop that was produced furthest to the left. You're just gonna insert your hook through there, just like that, and then continue on into the next stitch and insert your hook. You'll pull up a loop so that now you technically have three loops on your hook. Then you're gonna yarn over and pull through all three. Okay. So this is what links them together, and this is what creates a little bit more of a snug fabric. You probably can't see much of it happening just yet, but as we do a few more, it'll become much more apparent. So we're gonna do the same thing again. Now this time you're gonna notice that you've kinda of got three loops in the front here. So this top loop up here belongs to the top of the stitch. And these are the two front facing loops, is what, what I call them. So I'm going to insert my hook always into the furthest loop to the left there. Okay, just like that. And I'm gonna pull, oh, sorry, 
just like that. And then I'm going to continue on into the next stitch. And that is where I'm going to pick up that next loop. Okay, so again, three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. Okay, so you can see, so you can kind of see that the link loops, so to speak, are always slanting into the stitch next to it. So I'll do that again. So we're going to insert our hook into the loop furthest to your left. And then we're going to go into the next stitch. Okay, so you have three loops. Then you'll yarn over and pull through all three. Whoops, careful not to split your yarn. Okay, so you can start seeing that coming up a little bit more now. I'm going to do that one more time. So you want to be careful too. See how that one got really tight? You want to be careful not to pull too tightly because, as you can see, it'll make it a little trickier to insert your hook later. So for you tight crocheters out there, you want to be aware of that. So you can insert your hook into the loop first and then into the next stitch. Okay, three loops, yarn over and pull through all three. And that is your linked single crochet stitch. See how the, the stitches sit much more snuggled together. Okay, so that's basically all we're gonna use for this pattern and for this project. So continue on down the way until you get to your very last stitch. When you've got one stitch left, meet me back here and we'll talk about how to move on to row two. Okay, so I have one stitch left, and now you can really see that first row, the effect of the linked single crochet. I just love that. It also gives it a little bit of a stretch, too. So it's very cushy, which is perfect for uh, dishcloths or anything like that. And so basically, into your last stitch, you will just simply do the same thing. Sometimes stitches will have... Um, Stitch patterns will do something slightly different in the last one, but in this one, you're still going to go into that last loop there, go into your last stitch, and you're just going to finish off the linked single crochet as usual. Okay, so there you go, your last stitch. So now going on to row two and subsequent rows, you're simply going to chain one, you'll turn your work, and into that very first stitch there, you're just going to place a single crochet as usual. So now you'll notice that this stitch has created your loops on the top and your loops along the side. Okay. So you're always going into your regular stitch, your regular spot. So you can see the two V's on the top and you'll just pull up a loop and create a regular single crochet. So your rows will always begin. The very first stitch will always be a regular single crochet. Now from here, you will continue on with your linked single crochet by finding that first front loop to furthest to your left. You'll insert there first, and then you'll insert into the very next stitch. And it's once you do subsequent rows that you'll really see a really cool effect with this linked single crochet, because as you can see on this side, created like these front loop effects, and so now you're going to see that slanted link happening on this side, which is really, really cool. So let's do a couple more. Insert into the first loop there and then continue on into the next stitch. Pull up your loop and pull through. So hopefully you can see what I mean there. So each of the linked loops is slanting that way. And then this last loop here, the bottom loop, gets pushed forward, which also creates this really cool ribbed type texture. So one more time into the left loop and into the next stitch. Three loops, yarn over and pull through all three. Okay, and there you have it. So that is the linked single crochet and it's pretty straightforward from here on out. So you're going to work this all the way to the end of your row. Once you reach the end, 
you will chain one and turn. And remember the first stitch is always a single crochet first. Then you will continue on and uh, place one linked single crochet into each stitch. So I'm gonna leave you to do that. You should be off to the races now. And um, for my dishcloth, I am now gonna continue on and do 20 rows. And then I will meet back up with you here for the final reveal. So easy peasy, linked single crochet. If you have to stop the video and go back, definitely do that because you will find that most useful. And other than that, I will see you back here in a bit. And here you go, the linked single crochet washcloth. So I hope you found it as easy as it really is and it gave you a chance to just really explore how you can use some of your most basic stitches and just kind of kick them up a notch. And I love how it creates this thick, dense um, fabric here. Now mine is not a perfect square and I'm okay with that. I, as long as I can fit my hand flat on it, I'm pretty happy with that. I find with these types of uh, dishcloths with the cotton, I make them too large, like some people would have done 40 rows by 40 stitches. I just find once they get wet, it just gets to be a lot of uh, heavy fabric. So I'm pretty happy with that. If I can kind of fold that in half and uh, do that up, I'm pretty satisfied. So if you have any further questions, just pop them down for me in the comment box down below or email me directly at info at crochetcrafty.com. And you can also check me out on social media. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at The Stitch Sessions. Uh, tag me, show me some of your color choices for your washcloth. And if you are new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and that way you will always stay up to date on all the fun new tutorials I have coming up every Wednesday morning. All right guys, in the meantime, have an amazing day, happy crocheting, and take good care. I'll see you guys in the next session.